Hello everyone. Today we are going to go over breast pumping and how to size our phalanges. So without further ado, let's begin. Mommy, did you know? So for those of you who have not met me yet, my name is Rachel and I am an international board certified lactation consultant or an IBCLC. Feel free to subscribe for lots of amazing videos about breastfeeding and baby care. So one question I get all the time is, Rachel, can you size me for my breast pumps? And how do I use this thing? <laughs> so one thing that's very important to notice is that there are different breast pump sizes or different flange sizes. If you use a size that's too big, usually your areola will be dragging in too much and it's not going to be that effective and it can even cause nipple damage, especially because bigger flanges tend to draw out the nipple a lot more. If you use a size that's too small, sometimes the nipple's dragging against the walls of the flange and that can cause, of course, one, you're not going to be that productive, and then two is it can cause a lot of nipple damage, especially as you're using a size that's too small. So first of all, before we use this, one of the first things we should do is size our nipples or size our flanges. Now you can kind of do it by eye or I have like a stencil and this is kind of one of the geography, well geography, <laughs> geometry stencils. So this actually has like different numbers and I use this for a lot of my clients as well so that you can kind of see, all right, uh, she fits into, you know, whatever number. Now or you can even use a simple ruler or whatever have you have measuring tape. All you do, a simple rule of thumb, is you measure the size of the nipple and then you add four. So for this particular nipple, I think it's about a 14 and you can see it's about a 14. So what I'm going to do is, all right, my nipple size is 14. That does not mean that I'm going to use a 14 size flange. That means I'm going to use an 18 size flange based on the majority of uh, pump companies. Usually what they'll do for sizing is they'll recommend your nipple size plus four. You can always check to make sure, but on average it's about four more. So I would be using 14 as my, is the nipple size plus four would be an 18. Now, if you, some companies do not have 18 flange sizes. So what you might need to do if you have a smaller size, such as 18, 19, 20, you might need to have like a flange insert. Um, and they have so many different types. You could just um, type in flange insert and then your, um, and the number. So let's say it's like a 19 mm, 20 mm. It'll be easier, it'll be better if you can find one that matches your pump. So for example, let's say you have a Spectra or you have a Motif or you have a Modella, try to find an insert that matches your pump and it will tell you which flange that it will fit in. So let's say it fits into a 24 and it's an 18. All right, you know that I would need my 24 flange from my Spectra or Modella or Motif or you know whatever other uh, company that you're using and I would have the insert into that 24 to make it smaller for me to fit me into an 18 or 19. Some companies will have a smaller flange size that you don't need to have the insert itself. So it's really up to you. Now once we get situated and we get sized, how do you use the breast pump? How do you hold it um, and is it recommended to use one or both? So it is recommended to use both at the same time, especially if you are skipping a feeding. So let's say you're skipping a feeding, you're at work, or um, let's say you wanna increase your milk supply. By using both at the same time, you're going to increase your milk supply because your letdown is gonna happen from both sides. So by only doing one side, you are skipping out on a lot of good milk supply. So the only time you really do one is let's say if you're block feeding and uh, you're, you're only usually uh, draining one breast per feeding, maybe you would wanna use one, or let's say you put the baby on one and you are pumping the other one, let's say for um, maybe a twin, maybe you're putting one twin on this side and you're pumping the other side. However, if you, you don't wanna overdo it either because when you start over pumping, that can lead to oversupply. If you have questions about oversupply, feel free to comment or um, let me know as well. I would love to help you. Now for holding them, a lot of people I get, even, even today I did a consult and someone said, I feel like I can't use two because I feel like I am, um, incapacitated, like I can't do anything else. <laughs> so what you can do, one thing that I do, instead of holding it this way, because it takes forever and it's not very active, and sometimes it can take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I think that's too, too long. I really take 
10 to 15 minutes to pump. So what I do is instead of holding it that way, I hold it this way. I use these two fingers kind of as a support, um, especially it kind of holds it there nice and comfortable, not too tight because you don't want to be constricting all of your um, milk ducts, but instead I hold it just to kind of position it. And then I'm using these fingers to massage. You will notice such a big difference. You can even put your lactation massagers. Let's say you have um, a Freedom Mom massager or a Levy massager. You can put them over here put in and go <laughs> and then you can do this now let's say you need a hand let's say you're switching your uh let's say you're switching your mode or you want to work out a clogged milk deck that you have all you really have to do and this is harder because this doesn't have the suction but all you really have to do is hold kind of them like this so you see how i have one hand and i'm holding them like this will be easier when you have this suction because mine's kind of slipping because of my shirt but let's say i hold it with like this and i have this hand free that i can use for the mode to switch or i can scratch my nose because i don't know what it is when you start pumping your nose is all of a sudden itchy <laughs> i can use it to really work on a clogged milk duct let's say i have a milk duct here i can use it to kind of clog there unclog it anyways so by using this method you are allowing you to have a hand a free hand at least momentarily then you can switch back you might need to use your your leg a little bit to kind of position it so that you can pos reposition your hands back again and massage now for the modes what are you doing so for today i have a zombie pump and there's so many different pumps out there um this is a good one because it has different modes it has a massage mode expression mode um a lot of pumps will have this as well so what you first do is when you turn it on you will start out with the massage mode usually that is the mode that's very rapid and shallow just like babies what do they do when they first latch on they're very rapid and they're shallow so what we'll do is we will put it on to that massage mode first where we're rapid and shallow so that's usually like between um i would say like 60 65 whatever your pump has and then the intensity is going to be shallow or low so usually if you're postpartum of like one week two weeks maybe you'll need like um two or you know max three but i wouldn't really go beyond there for the intensity uh let's say you are one year postpartum maybe you, you can have a little higher maybe you can even start off with four or five um then you switch after about 45 seconds of that stimulation or massage mode so you're pretty much telling your body all right let's let's start elicit that letdown now once you've elicited that letdown you can switch to that expression mode um, and this one is just like a little button which has mode for example so a lot of times it'll look like a wave or it'll look like a button and then it'll switch and it'll be slower and deeper so typically i'll see between like 45 to 55 for the frequency and then for the intensity it depends if you're just now postpartum one week a few days maybe like five uh, four even it really does not need to be that intense now if you're one year postpartum maybe you can have it a lot more stronger but what you're going to have is the first kind of rapid and shallow 45 seconds then you're going to switch it to that expression or that letdown mode where you're going to be getting those letdowns you do that about three to five minutes or until you kind of slow down then you switch back to stimulate again when you stimulate again it will stimulate your letdown then you can switch back to the letdown mode so pretty much you're having 45 seconds of that stimulation mode three to five minutes of that letdown mode then you can switch back to that stimulation then you can switch back to that letdown so just like the baby would be stimulating some letdowns as well so this whole process can take 10 to 15 minutes max. You don't need to be pumping so, so long that you feel like your breasts are falling off. And you don't have to be pumping so intensely that you feel like your nipples are gonna be coming off either. The best way is just to have it in a, in a place that's kind of comfortable for you. Now, some things that can increase your milk supply as you're pumping, uh, use your senses. So you can try to visualize the baby as uh, the baby is, um, let's say, almost as if the baby was with you. So you can try to visualize the baby. You can have a picture of the baby. Some people have pictures of like water fountains or waterfalls. That works very well also. Some people, they like to listen. So sometimes people will listen to a waterfall. Sometimes people will listen to a baby crying. Uh, whatever works for you to kind of elicit that letdown. Some people like to have cues to cue their body to nurse. So that could be sitting in a chair, that could be uh, listening to a particular song, that could be massaging your breast before the feeds or the sessions. Those are all different things. You incorporate your sessions. There's also different meditations you can use. Um, some people, they also need to cover 
the the pump so let's say i have my my pump over here um this is the the zombie pump let's say this bottle i get discouraged because i try to pump and i see that only you know uh, only a few drops are coming out at first and i get discouraged that can decrease your milk supply so what i'm going to do is cover the the i'm going to cover the bottle until the very end maybe with like even a sock something that won't discourage me so what are some tips just to kind of um, recap everything one is before we get started we are going to size our nipples so you can size it with like um, a little stencil like this you can size it with a ruler measuring tape you just size the nipple add four um, then once you have your flange or inserts for the flange we want to make sure that we are holding them appropriately that we're actively pumping to be most um most active and most of course it's going to get the most amount of milk we want to make sure that we are also using the right um, modes that we are starting out rapid and shallow then we are switching between the expression and letdown modes um, you can use one or two sides at the same time if you're using only one you might need to plug the other one in most pumps like this one has a little plug that you can plug if you're only doing one pretty much i would be putting it on this side the tubing and then i would be plugging this in the uh the second port that way all of the air doesn't waste and then also if all else fails make sure that all of your um if you feel like you don't have that much section make sure you're switching your parts out you know make sure that you're switching your phalanges all of the um these make sure that your your membranes as well so uh, sometimes people forget the white uh, membrane in here the white valve so make sure that that's in there make sure it's nice and clean and change them out when needed as well so if you have any more questions about anything feel free to let me know um also would so appreciate it if you felt like this video helped you or you learned something new by all means please subscribe uh, that is a great way to help grow this channel feel free to share if you learned something comment like um if you have any more questions please let me know you can comment it or even contact me um, my website mommy did you know has a lot of wonderful information and resources. I do consultations as well. So if you would like me to check out your pumping routine or something like that, we can by all means talk and I do accept insurance. So something that um, is a resource that is available to you if you need. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Please subscribe and I hope that you tune in for my future videos.